good morning, everybody. I'm, my name's Debbie, and I'm a member of Christ Central. And today we'll be reading from Mark 4, verses 35 to 41. Um, let's just pray before we start. Um, so, Father, just ask your spirit to, to be with us and um, to help us to still our minds and to hear what you would have us hear this morning. Thank you, Father, that we were able to, to meet together, whether right now, over Zoom, or watching later on. But thank you for our community. Thank you for your love, Father. Amen. Right, <clears throat> so this passage says, That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Be quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So this story takes place in the evening by the Sea of Galilee, which is a freshwater lake in northern Israel. The men are on the west side of the lake. When Jesus asked them to go with him in the boat to the other side. Now two other of the gospel uh, books tell this same story but neither give any more detail. But I was just imagining in my head that the men, they were able to trust Jesus enough to follow him, perhaps against their better judgment. Not many of the local people would normally venture to the east side of the sea because it was inhabited by mostly non-Jewish people who worshipped other gods. And the boats that Jesus' disciples used were small fishing boats, and they were not intended for crossing the big sea. This sea is big. It's 14 miles long by 8 miles wide. The geography surrounding the lake made it susceptible to sudden storms that could suddenly turn a calm lake into a violent sea. And the great depth of the lake meant that waves could reach up to 15 feet high. And this is indeed what happened. We also know that there were other boats with Jesus on that journey. Therefore, many lives would have been at stake. So now I've set the scene for what happened out in the lake. It says that a furious storm blew up. Many of the disciples were experienced fishermen and expert sailors. So I wonder if waking Jesus was their first reaction. Or would they have tried every means that their experience had taught them to handle the boats and get through the storm? At the point that they awoke Jesus, the boat was nearly swamped with water. And so it's likely that they turned to Jesus because they were at the end of their means. At the point of pure desperation, they woke Jesus with screams of terror. Another account says that men woke Jesus and said something like, Lord, save us. Therefore, they did understand that he would be able to do something. He had already demonstrated his power in healing people many times. However, when he calmly rebuked the wind and the waves, and the storm ceased, they were awestruck. Controlling the weather was known as strictly as the domain of God. And at that moment, the disciples began to realize more fully who Jesus was. They were terrified, which is understandable in the, in the light of God's power and majesty. Jesus then asked very specific questions of them. He said, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? He challenged them with their unbelief. After all that they had seen him do, they still hadn't fully grasped 
what his power was capable of. So this story has a message for all of us right now in this situation that we find ourselves in at the moment. We can all go through challenging times and some of our circumstances can at times seem overwhelming. Many of us can carry the burden of anxiety or fear, perhaps not realising or thinking at the time that we can run to Jesus for safety. But the disciples came to learn that no matter how bad a situation seemed, the first thing they needed to do was turn to Jesus. When Jesus awoke, he immediately demonstrated that he was in control. There was no hint of worry or concern in his words. He just simply said, quiet and then be still. Um, when I was looking for information on the passage, I found out that there's a Greek word in this that literally means something like muzzle yourself and continue to be silent. And I love that because it's very authoritative and it gives me assurance of God's control over forces that can seem out of control in our lives. We are in a constant battle in our minds between feelings of faith and feelings of fear. But if we continually stand in front of our powerful God, we can rest. The disciples in the sinking boat faced overwhelming fears, but when Jesus so quickly calmed the storm, their fears were replaced with awe and worship. So before we pray, I wanted to read you a bit of Psalm 91, which also speaks of God's nature as a rescuer and a protector. So this first, one to four. <clears throat> Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his wings and he will shelter you. Sorry, he will cover you with his feathers and he will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armour and protection. So I don't know about you, but like the disciples, I have a tendency to try everything else first and work myself into a state of high drama before I think to call upon Christ. I need to be reminded that Christ lives in me and I can call upon him to calm every storm in my life. So I just thought we could bring in our hearts our fears or anxieties to him now as we pray in our groups. We don't have to name those anxieties necessarily, but we can just pray and just build up each other's faith that God has power to calm our storms. 